tie-in session. Notes are really important. A lot of folks say to me, what kind of notes do you do? And there's, there's like loads of different notes nowadays. It's like everything else in the business. There used to just be one or two things, and now, it, now there seems to be loads of notes for this, that, and the next thing. Anyway, people ask me, what do I use? Well, I've got about three notes that I use, and that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't use any the kind of newfangled ideas. I've got something that works, and so I just, I just stay with that, you know. So, basically, nylon, nylon to leader. This is one that uh, a lot of people kind of bypass. However, very simple note. All I do is at the end of my piece of nylon, I'm going to do double it over, make a, a hitch around one, two, in there, and always, always, always wet the note. So, here, <laughs> you have to get some moisture into your mouth to wet any note, you know. So, there you go. Mm -hmm. There's the knot, and make sure that that comes in evenly. And that's never going to break, he says. Never breaks. <laughs> so, trim the end. I remember a lot of the old guys that when I first started fishing actually wouldn't even bother to trim that, you know. They didn't even bother to trim that. And so many times when you were a, a gilly, the, the line would get caught in this yep. little bit. So, it's always better just to trim it. You'd be quite amazed at me leaving as much nylon as that. That's quite a big waste of nylon there. It's not like normal it. for a Scotsman, I have it's to not say. Normal for you, Ian. It's definitely not normal. <laughs> anyway, so um, we have. We'll just cut the piece of nylon here. And most of these um, fly lines, new fly lines, have got a welded loop on the end, like so. And once we have our loop in the fly line, in the sort of the nylon, then we take this and we push this one through here. We don't push that one through there, like that, because it's not going to lie right. It has the potential to lie wrong. We, you can fix it after that, but it does have the potential to lie wrong. So I always put the fly line through that one, then take the end of your loop and pop that through there and Bob's your uncle, as they say, so you have a nice, neat knot there. If I didn't have a knot here, um, or sorry, a loop here, I would use what I call a figure of eight on there. I'm going to do it very roughly, this figure of eight. But I would come up there, I would come around, and in here, and obviously this isn't a great example but that would give me a figure of eight with it so if I didn't have a loop I can use a figure of eight note. Um, the figure of eight note is a fantastic note. It's the note that climbers use when they're hanging off cliffs and stuff like that. So if a guy is suspending himself from a two mile drop with this note you can be rest assured that that note is very good you know. So if you've not got a loop on the end of the line you can use a figure of eight. That it's pretty much the only two that I personally use for attaching fly, uh, leader to fly line. So, then we've got, someone asked, I think it was yourself, Neil, the other day, what do you do with a, with a fly? Well, with a tube fly, if I had a tube, we'll just get a tube out of here, we'll get a, a hook. And fantastic box of flies there, uh, Chris, you can see them. Properly sorted out, you know proper Gillies fly box. Just it looks like uh, a magpie's been in there, <laughs> the squirrel's had it. Like so, mine, like mine. Bit, wait a minute, I'll have to get my glasses, I can't see the hole nowadays. There's not enough hair on this fly. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Right, so, there we go. And through we go. Um, now, so that's the tube fly tied on. Now the hook. Now, if the diameter of this um, nylon is like 0.25 or more, you'll get off with just a, a half blood knot. No, no trouble at all, it's not going to slip with most nylon. This is Berkeley XT, which is the strongest nylon I know on the market right now, but 
Berkeley XT. So I'm just going to do a, a normal uh, blood knot. Some people say five times round, some people say six times round. My dad always said six, so I never do what my dad told me. So it all just go about five. And then through that hole at the bottom, there we go. And with the thick nylon, um, it's no problem just to pull that tight. Always wet, oh, sorry. Always wet it. <laughs> cheers, cheers, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always wet it. And there we go. Pull tight. A wee bit long in the end there, again, for the Scotsman. He would rather have a quarter inch less than that, but there we go. So, that's not going to be a problem at all. Take the, the tube fly back down, da da da, into the wee holder there, and you've got no problem. The, the blood note, or half blood note, is foolproof. It's absolutely foolproof. It, it never slips. Um, excepting that if you have very, very thin nylon, then what I would do is this one. I would put an improved half blood on it. So I would do this through the eye of the hook. You see in there, Neil? Yep. And I would go tell plenty of nylon to work with because at the end of the day, that leaves a kind of bigger hole down here and easier to then tuck this back through that hole. So you've, you've went through the hole at the bottom, look, and now you're going to go back through there. Difficult actually with the cold hands here this morning. Need more central heating, guys. So there we go, and that's now going to run down. That one there is absolutely foolproof. It'll never ever slip. So it's a good note for that. Um, so with regard to tube flies, that's pretty much how I do it. So exactly how I do it. One of these two notes, and I don't need anything more because I know for a fact that they do the job, and I don't need anything. Else, you know. So. Uh, that's a tube fly, so, but in Scotland we tend not to use quite as many tube flies as they do in Scandinavia, etc. So we've got this beautiful, beautiful, close up of that Chris, I mean that's just, in fact I'm going to have to hold that, just shade it from the river in case a, a fish jumps out and grabs it out of my hand, because look, you know, is that not just such a beautiful specimen? Absolutely lovely. There we go. So, what what would we do differently? Would we just put a blood note on here? No trouble at all. We can just put a blood note on there. So, always from the bottom, Jim. Not from the top. With this particular demo, it doesn't matter quite the same, but I'll show you in a second. But you're right. Absolutely right. So here, look. One, two, three, four... Five will do through the wee hole at the bottom. Very simple knot, and that is going to hold no trouble at all with this gauge of nylon. Absolutely no trouble at all. Should really wet it. However, however, why do we not use this knot so much here with a normal fly like this? Well, the reason for that is you can see that at this moment in time, it's it's lying really nice and straight. We'll just trim it off so you can see it. It's lying really nice and straight to the to the hook. Yep. Or the hook is lying lovely and straight to the However, with this one, uh, the hook can sometimes end up like this. To the and um, and you it turns ninety degrees to the uh, nylon and that makes the fly swim <coughs> strangely in the water or possibly come to the top if you're looking to fish the line sub the fly subsurface. Um it's a matter of taste, guys. That's all it is. So, what do we do? I don't. I don't ever use that particular note on uh, normal flies. So, I use what we call a double turtle. And a double turtle is this one, where Jim, you're dead right. Always on a on an up-eyed salmon fly, you come from the bottom. Always start from the bottom to make this note. Uh, I see a lot of salmon fly tires now beginning to use trout, what we would have said was trout flies, trout hooks and, and down-eyed flies. We always associated that with trout fishing, I don't know why, but uh, salmon fishing was always up-eyed, so we'd go from underneath. But if it was a down-eyed fly, you would start, you'd start from above. 
But down there, throw the fly. I ah, would. Mm -hmm. if, if it was a down-eyed fly, you would you would start by pushing the thing in from above, Jim. Then. So that's the that's the thing that makes the difference is whether it's an up or a down eye. So there we go. So we throw the fly away, and then we get this. And this is the way I was like trained to do it. So I take uh, two loops, one, two, around that three fingers, and. I think a really good way of learning how to do, how to tie a fly is, is thinking more about what your fingers are doing rather than the, the knot itself. So I've got like two loops there, I've got the, the two loops and the little end stuck between my two fingers there, that's, that's giving my tension there. So what I do is then I push that one over the top underneath and I make a, just a half hitch nail around both the notes there, yep, yep. both the loops. So I've got that, I'm going to, I'm actually going to leave that slightly longer than I would normally do it because I'm really mean with my nylon again, but slightly longer and I would pull that taut but not tight. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, taut but not tight, it's a, it's a mega important one here. <coughs> and there is a reason for it, which I'll go into. So, now we've got this, it flies down the line somewhere, now we've got this scenario here, look, where we've got two loops with a half hitch, and importantly, the little end facing away from us. So not the little end facing towards us, upside down like that, the little end facing away. So what we do, is we then take the, the fly, and we run the fly onto the knot. We just drop it onto the knot, and then we run this finger under, and then grab the with the knot on the eye of the fly, we grab the knot there and we pass the fly and, the, importantly, the little end through like so. This is the main bit of the, the thing that everybody gets wrong. So you just drop the fly on there, run your finger down the nylon and then trap the knot, which is now sitting on top of the eye of the fly, trap it there and pass the fly through both uh, loops and importantly that little end okay so then when you've done that you grab the two loops with this middle finger that leaves the little end exposed there four thumb and four finger again pick up the tension on the line with that put the small end against the shank of the hook look here so now you've got that and then you take the end of the nylon and you pull this once look and you can see one loop is getting smaller don't just keep pulling it I'll show you what, what will happen in a minute, but as the small one gets smaller, grab a hold of the small one and pull it, that will then reduce the size of the big one around the shank of the hook, and then pull this one again. No trouble at all, everything is now with that double turtle, and it's an absolute foolproof knot. It's absolutely foolproof. And what, what's really good, and you'll get a close up of this, uh, Chris, what's really, really good is that it, it it keeps the fly absolutely dead straight on the line. The fly will always stay in exactly the same place as it's fishing round. So if that's your goal, if your goal is to have the fly fit in exactly the same place, that's the, a, a really, really good hook, um, knot. So, what other knot do I use? Well, we'll cut that one off. Oh no, I was going to show you very quickly. I was going to show you uh, this one, look. So, Exactly the same note you can do with just one turn. We call it a single turtle. So it's not one that I use, but just making one loop and then tying the half hitch around that and exactly the same. But, but aye. Aye, that's it. Single turtle, it's fine. Well, that's the Glen Fiddick doing it. Must be the water the bottles out of the thing. So anyway, I'm going to do a, a double turtle here just again. And I'm going to show you something which is the important bit of this double turtle. I'm just going to do it quickly this time to get into the same place as I was. If you find yourself in this situation, guys, and here's a mistake that a lot of people make when they make this uh, double turtle, they get into this position here, right? And instead of grabbing a hold of that first loop and pulling it, they just keep pulling. And, and when you do that, you're, like, you're going to get a lot of the times you'll get a, a curl on the line 
if you, if, and especially when I said taut, if you, if you pull that an initial knot really tight and then you pull the two loops together, you'll always have a wee curl. Mm. And you'll see there's a wee bend on that now. It's not dead straight as it was before. I've got a wee video on my, uh, my YouTube channel of exactly that and the effect of that under the water. You cannot believe this nailing that you'll see. If you've had a knot in there and it's wrinkled in any way, when you see that under the water, and particularly if you've got uh, uh, the sun, um, you have then refraction on the nylon, and it's amazing how much of the nylon you see if there's any kink or bend in it. So it's always good to have the nylon dead straight, and that's the way to get it dead straight. So anyway, that's that one. And here's the only other one that I ever use uh, on, a, on a fly. And this is a good one because um, if you want some movement in the fly, it's, it's common nowadays for guys to, when they're fishing, to want to have movement in their fly. It's, it, people have got interested in that. And a lot of the fly tying materials are such that it, it gives the fly lots of movement. So why then have the fly stuck rigidly on there with a, with a knot? So what we do with that, Jim, right again, up from the bottom here. And this is the easiest one out. The only thing from a Scotsman's point of view is that we waste about three inches of nylon. What a pure, absolute, even, even the thought of that pure nylon <laughs> thing. Mm. So, anyway, we come from the bottom and we've got this here, okay, double. All we do is we do this. We just tie that in a knot there. We pass the fly through. So pass that one through the, the little loop. You can make the loop bigger. This is me just trying to save nylon. Don't know why I do that. And then through again. So through twice. So I now have this. So I just have two loops around here. And I could pull. But if I pulled, and here's the important part of this particular knot. If I've pulled, this knot would end up way up here and I would have a big loop towards the thing. So what I do is I hook my two loops on around the eye of the fly. So then I pull, and my knot staying exactly where it is, and then right at the very end, I pull it off. Dump. So I've got my knot in exactly the right place. But that little hooking of the thing around the eye of the fly, that's the key to getting a nice tidy knot. So now your, your fly is mobile with this lovely um, new uh, dressings and new materials that they're using in fly tying. We've got a very mobile fly and we've got a foolproof knot as well. So there we go guys. That's the only three that I use except a, a normal dropper knot. If I ever use a dropper once in a blue moon I would use it, you know. When would you ever use that one? I would I would use this I would I would use this in the summertime, Jim. Ben. In the summertime if I wanted a wee bit of movement on the fly if I was fishing a was fishing a yeah, a big fly made with this type of material. There's a lot of like um, Arctic fox and that type of thing. Marabou they're even tying with now to give it plenty of movement. Um, so if I felt that I'm, I'm in, a, in a place where I want to say, say, I always look at people, you know, look at the, the rack of rods before you start. We, we talked about it yesterday. Um, I would have a look at what everybody's got on. And if everybody's got on a nice rigid fly, and a small fly, and a nice um, sort of skinny dress fly, I might want to try something like this. I would do it just to be different from everybody else. I think with salmon, I love something different. You know, so you'll go to a beach, for instance, and, and people will say to you, uh, Are you laughing at the Fishing exactly the same as the last one, you know. So, so when, when would you use it? I would, I, I, I would look at what everybody else is fishing, and I would try and be different, you know. But, but the actual, the um, physical uh, makeup of the pool that I would fish it in, I'd fish that in a, a place where I've got current, you know, where I have like strong current that the current's going to influence the fly. Or I would, if I'm using it in, a, in the tail end of a pool, I would then be working the fly. I'd be, you know, you'll, you'll see some people doing this type of thing mm -hmm. and, and moving the fly. That's exactly why that's 
uh -huh. for you know so I mean if you're if you're going to be moving the fly like pulsating the fly mm. then that's a good knot for it as well so, yep well, also, also perhaps with uh, when you're down at size 12 and you've still got a 12 pound nylon on absolutely it. absolutely that's another good one yeah. mm -hmm. a really good one because it gives a wee bit of movement on that fly instead of instead of the fly being stuck on the end of this thing like a washing machine mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah.